Every single time the Fed contracts currency and begins some form of quantitative tightening policy, the stock market falls. This is near 100% accuracy since the inception of the Fed in 1913. Why in the world are there individuals that believe, quote, this time is different and that it won't happen this time? What sort of conclusions have been conjured to believe that the Fed will magically be able to tighten their belts and somehow not create the next crisis? This is nonsensical from a historical point of view, and we will eventually see why. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, we are going to look at the Federal Reserve. I want to show you the Fed funds rate. I want to show you the shadow Fed funds rate, which is very important, which is not discussed in the mainstream media. I want to look at a Financial Times article that completely correlates to what I've been talking about. I want to show you the yield curve. I want to look into the details which are never pieced together, and I hope that you will enjoy it. Let's begin by taking a look at at this. Maybe it's all about the Fed. The chart above, which I'll show you in a second, shows the cumulative rise in the effective federal funds interest rate from its previous low and the subsequent US recessions that have followed. I have clearly displayed this so many times before. You've seen the Fed funds rate, where it has gone, where it has been. This trade issue that's been happening right now, as well as Brexit, maybe grabbing all the headlines, but history tells us that that previous U.S. recessions have all been preceded by an extended period of monetary tightening by the U.S. Central Bank. Did you read that properly? Did you hear that? Every time they tighten, a crash follows which gives the recent tech sell-off and jitters over global economic growth further context. It gets even more interesting when you take into account the tightening effect of the Fed's QE unwind that started in 2014. The effect can be measured as a rise in the Fed funds rate using the shadow federal funds rate. I'll show you a chart on that in a moment. With this included, it looks like the current tightening cycle has already surpassed a level that has historically aligned with the US economy hitting reverse. Isn't that funny that it happens to coincide with Powell saying, you know what, maybe now's a good time to start slowing down. Maybe now's a good time to believe that we're about there. And the wording has changed somewhat. At least it isn't so easygoing as it was several months ago before October's issues. And I'm going to show you the charts that happen to completely unveil what has happened. This is the shadow federal funds rate. It is so important to understand this. If you haven't heard me talk about it before in the description of it, I've done other videos about it. But take a look at this for a moment. You can see the difference between the effective federal funds rate, that's the bluish line, and that is the official rate supplied by the Federal Reserve. The green line, however, is the shadow rate. So let's compare the two, let's talk about it. Leading up to the housing crisis, we knew what was happening, the irrational exuberance, all of the housing issues, the subprime, the whole market getting way too hot, and then interest rates were rising here, and you can see it ends up at about 5.5% or so. Okay, so let's just say round numbers, 5.5% on the Fed funds rate. And then, of course, we enter the crisis. And during that time, the Federal Reserve decided the best thing to do was to decrease interest rates to a rate they've never been before. And that was approximately 0 to 0.25%. All right, so it historically had never been this low, but they decided now would be the time to do this unprecedented measures. It's only going to be temporary, we promise. And it was at that level for years and years and years. So at the end of 2015, I believe it was December 2015, we got our first hike. So they brought it up there and they decided now would be the time to start raising. Now that quarter of a point basically doesn't make a difference at all. However, I wanted to look into the shadow rate to give us an idea of where they actually took this. So in real terms, they actually brought rates down to minus 3%. That's where this ended up. So the drop was 5.5% and, 
and all the way down to negative 3% in real terms. That means that they would have to then bring it up only a few percent to mean how much it did in the previous cycle. So here you can see it was at 1% at its lowest point when the whole irrational exuberance activity was spawned up to 5.5%. So round numbers, let's say a 4.5% increase. 4.5% going this direction and now from 3% up until the point where we're at today, which let's just use round numbers, around 2%, we are basically right in the same territory today. And that's not good. That's not good if you're worried about this, because according to this chart, we are already at the levels. In fact, this next chart shows us we've surpassed it. So when you add up the levels, this uh, pink line here is the implied tightening from the QE unwind, the shadow federal funds rate, and the blue line represents the effective Fed funds rate. And according to this, we've actually exceeded it. By the way, this chart here is from the Financial Times. The previous one was from the Atlanta Fed, I believe. I always like to give the actual source when I possibly can. If it's available, I bring it to you. I take the extra step. I go into the Federal Reserve website. I go into the Treasury's website. I look at the Social Security Administration's website. I give you the data. And even if I'm not going to necessarily show you a chart that represents that data, I will also give give you the data and you could find it in the sources. That's what I like to do because then you don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe the chart. You can see the data directly from the government sources. So this right here tells us in every single case, a tightening cycle brings a recession. Look at this. You can see this uh, white line. That's a recession. They tighten. They get to a certain point, which you can see right there. They realize, uh oh, what the hell do we do? And they have to bring rates down. Same situation here in the previous cycle. They get to a certain point, they realize what the hell do we do, doesn't last too long, and they have to bring rates down. And by the time they're bringing rates down, the recession's already on. The same exact thing is happening today. They're tightening. The reason, the catalyst, the trigger, the event that's going to bring this market down I have absolutely no idea. When it happens, I have absolutely no idea. We can make educated guesses. We can point to certain issues that are present today. But to be an oracle, to be a soothsayer, to be a fortune teller isn't my task. I don't know any of that information. There are a lot of people out there like Jim Bear Stearns Kramer. There's a whole bunch of people making videos, calling themselves financial experts, telling you what they bought, telling you why you should buy it as well, giving you advice. That's not what I do. I show you the data and I hope that you appreciate that. I'm not trying to put anything that I know or anything that I have found onto your plate. You can do what you want with the data and I hope that this is something that you really do appreciate because I don't like people telling me what to believe and I know you're probably the same way. You want to know the stuff, you want to know the info and you don't want to get into all the personal things that go behind that with somebody who's believes so much in something like for example if they own a particular stock they just believe it for whatever reason and they try to tell everybody that this is what you have to do and you're wrong if you don't believe what they believe and that's foolish. That's a foolish behavior. Behavior. What's happening today is something that we can completely line up with history and we know that we are heading into a crisis. It's silly to think otherwise. It really is. Central bank balance sheet expansion, or in this case, contraction. Now, obviously, we're looking at this. This is an annual change. Year over year, we're seeing the decline in the amount of money held by central banks. This compares the three, Fed, ECB, and the BOJ, and guess what? All of them are printing less money today. They're starting to unwind their balance sheets, and it's taken a long time, and it's going to take a much, much longer time. By the end of 2019, the Federal Reserve is still going to hold on to, I believe the number is just under $2 trillion worth of treasuries, not even the mortgage-backed garbage. I'm talking about the treasuries. They're still going to have $2 trillion of that if they go ahead according to schedule. So, of course, they're not going to be able to. And if they do, it's even worse. It's even worse for the stock market. But let's assume they do. Let's assume they go ahead as schedule. They are still holding $2 trillion by the end, one year from now. In fact, more than a year from now. So that tells us we've got an interesting year ahead of us. We're here at the beginning of December. 
looking at this information and we can't ignore it. We can't deny it. There's no way. And this seems to be the one that all of the financial analysts look at. The yield curve, okay? It's omnipresent. It is the one. It is the all. Well, it's just one indicator as far as I'm concerned. We're basically just about there. If it gets to zero, that's going to be the sign, the signal, the trigger for so many different algorithms. So many different events will take place if it stays below zero for a period of time. I'm sure it can drop down there for a moment, come back up and nothing will occur. But if it stays there, remains there for a period of time, I think this is going to be very, very interesting to say the least. Not because this yield curve inversion has an impact on anything necessarily, but you have to remember what happens with all of these algorithms trading on this information. They're waiting for this. They're waiting for this event. And if it happens, suddenly there's going to have to be a lot of second nanosecond trades that are gonna occur based on that data in a negative way. So I don't particularly look at this one as being so important over the others. There's always a whole bunch. I mean, we're talking hundreds and hundreds just that I've shown here on the channel that give us this idea that it's really, really dangerous on so many different levels. This is just one of them. So I'm going to end the video there. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. I hope that I made myself clear in this video. It's very simple the way I look at it. You can look at the financial analysts and they complicate things. They are constantly adding jargon. They are making it very difficult for you and I to understand. Look at the equations that make up a derivative and you know how ridiculous, how absolutely ridiculous this financial system has become. And as it was created, it will be destroyed. If you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have it all. You can get the details you need at the link in the description below. If you want the audiobook version, you can get that at themoneygps.com.